whether you feel it or not. It's here. Whether you want it or not. It's here. Sure. The presence of the Lord is in this place. Father, we thank you for sending your presence, for being your presence, for having your presence in this place. As we look at your word, may we feel your presence in this place. Today we're just going to look for a short time under the title of Pardon, Pardon, Pardon. An inmate sat on death row for about 20 years, waiting to be executed. The day drew closer for his execution. All the rituals were done. Whatever priest, whatever chaplain needed to come to him. He continued to talk about his innocence. But still, the day drew closer. The morning of his execution, just as he was about to go to the electric chair, the word came down from the governor, your pardon. Family members, including himself, had so much joy, they were beside themselves not knowing what to do, but just, just be happy in Jesus. Because his execution was stayed. I'm here to say to you that God in his love and mercy has done the same thing for us. We were sentenced. to die for the sins that we've committed. But on Calvary, <laughs> just when the devil thought that he had won, Jesus laid down for a little while. And then early sent him away. Early sent him away. He got up <laughs> and said, Devil, let my people go. Because <laughs> you have no hold on them anymore. The feeling of being pardoned is one that you can't begin to explain. Because you know that it is mercy that it is love that has caused this. As I look back in the Bible and wonder to myself why certain things are written the way they're written, I've come to an understanding and, 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 and maybe, maybe you'll embrace the same thing I will and maybe you won't. But I take you over to the book of Isaiah. What book did I say? Isaiah chapter 25. Isaiah 25. Isaiah 25, verse 8. 
When you have it, please indicate by saying amen. amen. All right. And if you don't, just say wait. All right. I hear a few wait. All right. Isaiah 25. Hey. It says, and, and he will swallow up what? Death in victory. And the Lord God will what? Wipe away tears of all faces. Hallelujah! <laughs> yes. And the rebuke of his people shall he take away from all of all the earth. The Lord hath spoken it. He will swallow up death and wipe away tears. Huh. There's another famous wipe away tears passage that you know, and that's taken from Revelation 21, 4. Revelation 21, 4. When you have it, say amen. amen. If you don't, just say wait. I didn't hear any waits. So we go. Revelation 21 4 says, And God shall wipe away all tears yes. from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more for the former thing. A pastor. <laughs> God shall wipe away all tears. I wrestled with that for a while, wondering why is God going to wipe away tears? Then I came to the realization, okay, that it's because of, of sadness. There is no sadness in heaven. So there will be no tears in heaven. But, 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 but then I'm still wrestling with it because I, I realize that it's not just sadness that brings tears, but joy can bring tears. I'll take you to Genesis. What book did I say? Genesis chapter 45. Genesis chapter 45. Now, I, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will admit to you that it's very few times, but there has been maybe one or two times that tears have welled up in my eyes because of joy. Huh? But I know, I know individuals who, they can be so happy that they can cry. The tears will come to their eyes. Genesis chapter 45. Uh, let's look at verse 2. It says, are you there with me? Amen. And he did what? He wept aloud, and the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard. You must know by now that this is the story of Joseph. Joseph, as a young lad, had been favored by his father. Joseph was the, uh, the firstborn son of uh, the, 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 the woman that, 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 that Jacob loved the most. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jacob had been tricked, <laughs> Lord have mercy, into marrying a woman that he really didn't love. Uh, marriages are not like marriages today. But here comes the bride with play, and everybody can, can see the bride. Uh, those were the days when here comes the bride, I don't think was played. Because it's as of late that we have here comes the bride. The groom was the one who was most important when you go 
go back to Matthew 25, you will find out that the bridesmaids were waiting for the groom. Well, these days, the groom is waiting for the mm, And I've been to some of them, and you wait, and you wait, and you wait. And is she coming? Is she not coming? You, you see, uh, dear, dear, dear friends, you all as, 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 as men are much better than I am because when I was getting married, I made sure What's that, uh, in the mighty name of Jesus yes, that the group, that the bride was on her way right. before I come to the church because I'm going to sit down there and wait and wait No, no, no. So I made sure on the day of Sister Washington, I went over and said, do you need me to help you get dressed? <laughs> for I can see that it's a fashionable thing for brides to be late. And I don't want to wait. I've been waiting all these two decades plus in the name of Jesus. No, I got no, 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 no. I need to know you're coming. So if there's anything I can do to help speed up this process, do I need to curl it here? Huh? Amen. Hmm? Do I need to get out the shoehorn? Praise the name of Jesus. And do I need to uh, lack something or pull up something? Help me, help me, Holy Ghost. Hmm? But I wasn't there waiting. I knew she was on the way. Hmm? Yes, sir. Yes. Saw her get in the car. But I said, okay, fine. It's time for me to go. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Let me see. All of these other men, God bless you all. You got much faith in the name of Jesus. Yeah, you sit down there and you wait. You. Jacob. Waited seven years to marry the beloved one. He had seen the woman and, and, and she had taken him, his heart went. And so seven years to work for her was nothing. The day came and he thought he was standing beside his bride. The one he loved. I can hear Jacob now with all the tenor in his voice. I do. I do. Took her home. Spent the night with her. And in the morning, Lord have mercy. I, 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 I wish I had somebody here who will understand what I'm about to say, but I'll translate it later. In the morning when he woke up and he looked across at his bride, it was Lubavush Leah. It was Cass I Leah. You know the individuals who you don't know if they're looking at you or they're not looking at you? Supposedly, but you don't, you're not quite sure whether they are looking at you or they're not looking at you because their eyes are cut. Yeah. Yeah. And so, Jacob jumped back. That's not my bride. Oops, sorry, too late. You've already enjoyed and consummated this marriage. This is who you're going to be with. Are you kidding me? Follow me as, as, as Jacob jumps up from that bed and he runs after his father and says, Man, what have you done? Now, 
is not who we bargain for. Be careful of what you do. That's right. That's right. Because that which goes around comes around. You see, it was Jacob who had tricked his father some years ago into thinking he was Esau. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, he had put on skin. He had made a pot of soup, but he had said, I am Esau, the firstborn. And his dad says, the voice sounds like the voice of Jacob, but, 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 but the skin feels like, like, like my son Esau. He had tricked his father. He had gotten the birthright. Now, when the trick comes back around on him, Lord have mercy. He now ends up with a wife that he didn't bargain with. For better, for worse, for keeps. What have you done? Father, what have you done? I've done nothing, son. Nothing. Nothing. More than a follow the tradition of our country. The firstborn must get married before the second born. You see, Laban, who was a father-in-law, knew that if he did not trick this young man into marrying Leah, he would probably, as a father-in-law, have to take care of her for the rest of his life. Yes, yes. Because any man that came by didn't know whether she was looking at him <laughs> or not. And so he knew since there was no corrective lens surgery that time, he was going to be stuck with her. Seven more years! And you can get the word that Satan will not say, I, I, I hope there are no more sisters. I, I, I don't mind working another seven years, but I, I wish, I hope. Are there any more sisters? Any? any more of you? Huh? Maybe one lady? Maybe. Huh? Any more? Because I, I can't go through that again. Cannot go through that again. Here is Jacob, and he is the father of Joseph. The woman who we love bore him a son called Joseph. We love that boy. Love that boy maybe too much. The second son from the woman he loved was Benjamin. And she died in childhood. Because of his love for that boy, the other brothers, let, 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 let me pause here and say this. Nobody has everything in the world. Right. Nobody has everything in the world. Rachel had looks, but she couldn't conceive. Leah didn't look so good, but every time that Jacob passed by her death, <laughs> I mean, home, he didn't even see that homeboy stop. He just passed by. Oh, God, and she was pregnant. But I got kings. You looking at me? Yeah. <laughs>
Somebody you don't even want to take out at night. Because she's not a looker. But she can have children. Trust me, she can have children. Even her servants can have children. That's right. Hmm? Joseph was so well loved that his brothers hated him. He's got ten brothers and the ten brothers hated him. I'll fast forward the story. They sold him into slavery. Joseph went through all the stuff. Remember from the pit to the palace? We talked about that before. We're not going to go over that again. Here is now Joseph in, in the palace. And, and, and it was about 23 years later. 23 years when they sold him, he was about 17. And now there's about 23 years later. And, and his brothers are in need. And his dad, the dad says to them, I hear that there is food in Egypt. Daddy doesn't even know who is in charge of Egypt. Why are you grieving for the past 23 years about a son that's dead? Hmm. His son is very much alive and in Egypt and is going to be the savior. I want you to know that, 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 that the story of Joseph uh, 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 depicts somewhat uh, that of Christ. Joseph was sold for 20 pieces of silver. Jesus was sold for 30 pieces of silver. Joseph's coat was stripped from him, his cloak. Jesus' cloak was stripped from him. Joseph was sold by his brother into the hands of slavery. Jesus was sold by his disciple, Judas, into the head of him. Did there, there some, some other similarities there? Joseph and, and, and Jesus. The brothers come down to Egypt and they are in need of food. And as soon as Joseph sees them, he recognizes them because they were older and they were already mature when he was a young man. But at 17, between 17 and 23 years later, he has matured. He doesn't look like anything that they remember. And so Joseph sees them, all the, 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 the ten of them, and he recognizes them right off of that. Can you imagine Joseph's heart skips a beat? Those are the boys who sold me. Look at them. And when they come in, oh, they're bowing down. Remember they said they wouldn't bow down? Remember they said that? When Joseph had these dreams, they said, Who are you? Why do you think we're going to bow to you? Are you, are you crazy? Now, later on, you find that. Get, get 
Joseph's brother came in. Joseph put them through a, 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 a drill, told them they were spies, and they all got, they all got kind of uh, upset because they knew they weren't spies. But, but, but deep down in their heart, they knew that they were, 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 were suffering retribution for the stuff that they did to their brother. They started talking in their own tongue because Joseph wasn't talking to them in his tongue. Joseph was talking to them for an interpreter. So they didn't even recognize or know that that was Joseph. They started talking among themselves, saying, you know what we're, what we're suffering? It's stuff that we've done to our brother Joseph. Let me tell you something about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has a, has a way of bringing back to you some things that you've already done. And, and, and I've got a good friend by the name of uh, Pastor Patrick Vincent. He had this famous sermon, in my opinion. Sometimes it's not the cross that you're bearing, it's the crop that you're receiving. Many times you're thinking it's your cross. It's not your cross. It's your crop. Because that which you saw. Stop talking about, man, my cross is so many. No, it's not your cross. Many times, it's not your cross. Go back and think back. Not your cross. It's your cross. Mm-hmm. They had gone for, for food. Joseph had put them through the, the rear. Joseph even said to them, you are spies. And they said, no, we're, we're one more son. And, and they're 12 of us. And, and, and the youngest is at home. Who you, who you said? Who you said you? 
with joy. Joseph had so much joy. He was the one who was giving. You sold me. You stripped me of my, my, my clothes. I was begging you boys not to sell it. But look at you now. I've got the upper hand. No, but because of love, because of mercy. Joseph pardoned them right there on the spot. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Point number two. Those who are pardoned are not deserving of pardon. Those who are pardoned are not deserving of pardon. You see, Joseph's brother did not come to Egypt with an intention of asking for forgiveness. Because they didn't even know that Joseph was still alive. They had sold their younger brother into slavery. They had no clue whether he was dead or alive. All they came for was to get something to eat and fill up their sacks and go back to their families and feed their families. They didn't even ask Joseph when Joseph found out. They didn't even ask him pardon. I'm here to say to you that those who get pardoned are not deserving of pardon. Because the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6. Isaiah 64, 6. But we are all as an unclean thing. And all our righteousness are as filthy rags. And we all do fade as a leaf. And our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. None of us, no, not one of us, deserve God's pardon. But the good thing is, you don't have to be deserving to get it. Grace, grace, God's grace. Grace that can pardon and cleanse with it. God's grace, marvelous grace. Grace that is greater than all our sins. The one who pardons has overwhelming joy. Point number two, the one who gets pardon does not deserve pardon. But I say thanks to the Almighty God, just like Joseph, Christ looking at us, realizing that we don't deserve pardon. Joseph gave pardon to his brothers just the same, even though they weren't deserving of the pardon. Son of God, like my God, that can give pardon like that. The brothers. were so astounded that the fact that Joseph was still alive, the fact that Joseph was the head, basically, of Egypt, that when you read the scriptures, it says that, that, that they couldn't do anything but just, just, just stand there. They, they didn't know what to do. They couldn't say, well, yeah, we knew you would make it, man. We, we, we happy that, that, that you came through. They, they couldn't say, well, 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 well we, we'll pay you for the, the, the stuff that you went through. We, we, we'll pay you. We'll, 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 we'll. No, they just stood there. Because they were wrong. What do you say to somebody who you sold into slavery? Haven't seen for 23 years. Don't know whether they were dead or alive. And now they appear and they're at the top of their game. They are just next to the ruler. After
after you saw, everything was taken from them. Let me also tell you this. When Joseph told his brother that he was Joseph, and they went back to get Jacob, there was another set of pardon that had to come in. Because when the brothers came to their father, now they got to say, Daddy, guess what happened? What happened? We went down to Egypt. And Joseph is still alive. Huh? Jacob said, okay, 
Okay. I leave it from Canaan and I go down and I go to Egypt because I want to see my son. I want to see my son. And instantly, he went. Point number three. And I'm done. Hard neck. Bring that strange part of us closer together. Pardoning brings a strange part of us closer together. You see, in the 23 years while Jacob was with his 11 sons, they weren't as close as when they found Joseph and realized that he was alive. The relationship that the boys had had with their dad was estranged, even though they were at home. Even though they had families of their own, it was still estranged because they knew they were carrying in their heart a lie about their younger brother. They knew that they had done wrong to their younger brother. They knew that they shouldn't have sold the boy. They knew that his blood was on their shoulder. And so even though they had communication with their dad, every time they saw their dad, they knew that their dad was grieving over the boy that he loved so much. It was tough enough for Jacob to have lost his lovely wife in childbirth. But that which kept him going was the fact that he had two sons from her. And the firstborn in that kind of society was always looked upon as being the special one. But in an instant, as Jacob pardoned his ten sons, that relationship got better. In an instant, as Joseph pardoned his ten brothers, that relationship got close. He said to them, now that you know where I am, I don't even want you to be in Canaan anymore and, 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 and me to live here in Egypt. I want you to go pack up everybody, everything, and come and stay in Goshen, close by me. Dear friends, I just feel that there's somebody here with, with a relationship that is estranged. A relationship that maybe 23 years have driven you apart. Whatever that, that happened. I'm saying today is the day to part that individual. Yes, they may not ask for pardon, but Joseph's brothers didn't ask for pardon. The ten boys didn't ask for pardon. Jacob gave pardon, Joseph gave pardon. Right of an instant. My God is able to give you pardon. Right of an instant. Is there somebody here who needs to pardon somebody else for something that they have done? Maybe they've done it so long that you don't even remember what it really is. Or you know that you don't talk to them anymore. You can't remember why it is you really don't talk to them. You just say, I don't, I don't. No, I don't. My heart is heavy because I, I, I know that even as Christians, we don't all get along. But we all sing when we all get to heaven. When we all, when we all, when we all, we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that would be. And we can't rejoice down here. If you see me coming, you turn away. 
If you see me in a crowd, you won't speak to me, you'll speak to everybody else in that group, but not me. But when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Who is we all? Because some of us are not going to be there. I'm saying to you, no matter what somebody did you, I can't think of something worse than being sold in this land. I can't think of something worse than your family just abandoning you. The kind of inspiration says that when those boys heard Joseph say, it is me, the flashback of Joseph begging them not to sell him came back to them. It says that Joseph pleaded with them, please, begging you, don't, don't do this. They were so angry with him, they, they didn't even hear that. Came back to them. Because they were afraid now. Now what is he going to do to us? Now that he has the other hand. Oh, it was ten of us then, but, but Joseph could just snap his finger and all of them would be killed. But in an instant, he forgave them. Is there somebody that you need to forgive today? Is there somebody that you need to pardon today? I'm saying don't wait for tomorrow. For tomorrow may well be too late.
Because there may be there may be relationships where Jesus had have gone astray. Gracious God, as I think about your pardoning blood, shall it happen that you're now blind in the most holy place against my name, one, one preacher described it as when you turn to the page with his name, all you see is that it's just dripping with blood. Well, Jesus, I know there is so much blood that you've got to apply to my name. Thank you for your pardon. Oh! 